Welcome to your writing tutorial. This tutorial will help you write a paragraph response to a prompt from any discipline – math, science, social studies, English, and more. While you watch, feel free to pause to take notes, rewind to understand important details, and look at your assignment and writing as you attend to the example in the video. Ready? Let's go! Today we will explore definition and sequence writing – two different types of writing merged into one. Other videos exist for definition writing and sequence writing. You may wish to review those in addition to this video. Today we will talk about two writing tasks merged into one. If you are writing a definition piece, you often must show several parts of a definition. Your teacher probably wants you to understand every aspect of a concept, and that means several parts of a definition will be explained. In sequence writing, you will show several steps to accomplish a given task. Today we will discuss a mathematical reflection, which will require both showing the different steps of a sequence as well as all the parts of a definition. Here's a sample prompt. This sample prompt contains really three different prompts. We start with, what does it mean for shapes to be mathematically similar? Explain every aspect of similarity you can think of. Let's take a look at a student answer. That means that the two are similar mathematically. The two could have the same size, shape, same length, same area, and perimeter. You can find a scale factor by finding what number is used to multiply the first shape to get your second shape. While this answer is moving in the right direction, it represents several problems in writing. Let's take a look first at the topic sentence. The topic sentence of this student's answer is this. That means that the two are similar mathematically. The two could have the same size, shape, same length, same area, and perimeter. What must a topic sentence do in any paragraph that is answering the prompt? It must, of course, restate the prompt, but it also must add an answer. Let's look at the prompt again. What does it mean for shapes to be mathematically similar? Explain every aspect of similarity you can think of. In answering the first task, restating the prompt, you must think about what the core noun is. What should be the subject of your sentence? This is vitally important. In this prompt, we are talking about shapes. Shapes should be your core noun because your teacher has asked you to think about and write about shapes. This student has written a sentence that uses subjects that are unclear. That is the first subject. The two is the second. Neither of those directly state shapes. We can revise into this sentence. Shapes are mathematically similar when they meet criteria. How many criteria? Well, that's to be determined. We could say that shapes are mathematically similar when they meet three criteria. Shapes is a strong subject. We can also add they must be the same shape, have the same angles, and shrink or grow proportionally. I have changed the content because the student's original answer was mathematically incorrect as well as flawed in writing. This new topic sentence, which is actually two sentences expanded, uses shapes as a subject and they which refers to shapes. In that, it restates the prompt. The second sentence also adds an answer. The math teacher now knows that the writer understands that they are talking about shapes and what the answer is to mathematical similarity. When you are writing a topic sentence, make sure to do both. Restate the prompt and add an answer. When you are restating the prompt, focus on the important noun, in this case, shapes. Let's take a look at the second part of the prompt. How can you determine the scale factor between two similar shapes? Show an example when the scale factor is greater than one and another example where the scale factor is less than one. Be sure your explanation supports your illustration. You is the important noun in this prompt. Sometimes your teacher may ask you not to use the second person voice, not to use the you. This teacher has specifically asked you to use it by phrasing the prompt in this way. When you read a prompt that asks about you, you are free to use the word you as your subject. Here's a student answer to this prompt. To find the area of a shape, you do base time height. But if it is a triangle, you do base time height. Corresponding angles and corresponding sides just mean that they are similar, like angles always stay the same, so that makes them corresponding angles. 
The corresponding sides mean that they are bigger by a number or smaller by a number. Image is like a picture. Obviously, this writing is severely flawed, but it can be fixed. Let's focus on the topic sentence first. The student has written, to find the area of a shape, you do base time height. We must restate the prompt in this way, to find the scale factor of a shape. Because originally, the prompt is asking about finding the scale factor of a shape. This student, in writing, to find the area of a shape, you do base time height, has not paid attention to the prompt. We can revise that by writing to find the scale factor of a shape. Make sure that you are restating the prompt as the prompt was originally written. We can add an answer also by expanding the sentence in this way. To find the scale factor of a shape, you must find the ratios of corresponding sides. This sentence is now complete. It restates the prompt by focusing on the important noun you. The noun of this sentence is you. And it also adds an answer. You must find the ratios of corresponding sides. Your math teacher now knows that you understand exactly what the prompt is asking and what the answer is. What about sentence structure? In the paragraph, you must be concerned with sentence structure. And that means that you must be concerned with whether or not the sentences follow from clear nouns and clear verbs. Here is a student answer that we can work with. You can determine scale factor between two similar shapes when you find out the side lengths. Example, two squares on with side lengths of 4 and the other with side lengths of 16. The scale factor is 4 if it is the smaller shape to bigger shape. If it's bigger shape to smaller shape, then the scale factor is 1 to 4. Once again, this writing is flawed. Let's take a look at this one sentence. Example two squares, I assume that on means one, with side lengths of four and the other with side lengths of 16. Not only does this sentence not provide a clear sentence structure, but it is a sentence fragment. It must be revised. In order to revise the sentence, we must start with a strong subject. We've determined that this paragraph is focusing on the you in response to the prompt. So let's revise. We must understand that squares is right now the subject of this fragment. Let's use a better subject for our re revised sentence. For example, you may examine two squares, one with side lengths of four and the other with side lengths of 16. Now we are focusing on the strong subject, you. The original word example is expanded into a proper transition phrase, for example. A comma separates it from the strong subject, you. For example, you may examine two squares, one with side lengths of four and the other with side lengths of 16. Our new sentence uses a clear subject. If you remember your clear subject, you can write strong sentences. Let's take another example from this same student writing. The scale factor is four if it is the smaller shape to bigger shape. If it's bigger shape to smaller shape, then the scale factor is one to four. Obviously, this sentence is flawed. It is a run-on sentence, and we will fix that. But let's think about the nouns first, the subjects of the sentence. We want to use a strong subject, because a strong subject will usually lead to a strong sentence. This student is focusing on the subject of scale factor. Is that appropriate? Of course it is. We're talking about math, and the mathematical concept, scale factor, angles, sides, shapes is appropriate. So use the mathematical concept as a strong subject. The scale factor is four if you are comparing the smaller shape to bigger shape. If you are comparing the bigger shape to smaller shape, then the scale factor is one to four. This two series of sentences shows strong subjects, scale factor and you. Remember that we were using you throughout the paragraph in response to the prompt. But now we can use scale factor as a subject as well. Each of these sentences is a complex sentence. That means they are actually two sentences merged into one. Each sentence uses a strong subject, scale factor, and you. If you focus on strong subjects, remember what you are talking about. Avoid words like there or example then you can write stronger sentences.
Let's also talk about transition words and phrases, what we might call transition language. Transition language is simple to use, and students often understand these simple words and phrases that provide transition and merge sentences together. They could be words like first, second, next, and then. These words are transitions of sequence. They could be words like however, on the other hand, also, or likewise. These are compare and contrast transition languages. Let's take a look. The scale factor is 4 if you are comparing the smaller shape to bigger shape. If you are comparing the bigger shape to smaller shape, then the scale factor is 1 to 4. We have two sentences, and two sentences, if they contain different ideas, often require strong transition. We know that the first sentence shows something different from the second sentence, and that means that we are dealing with contrast. If we use a simple word like however, we can show the contrast between these two ideas. The scale factor is 4 if you are comparing the smaller shape to bigger shape. However, if you are comparing the bigger shape to smaller shape, then the scale factor is 1 to 4. The simple word of however is powerful. It shows the difference between the two sentences. Here's another student answer. This student answer makes use of transition language. First, next, then, and also are simple transition words. What's the impact? This student has shown the relationship among the different ideas. Let's read and see how it flows. Shapes can be mathematically similar in three ways. First, the shape must have congruent corresponding angles and the same ratio, which is the smaller side length over the larger side length in fraction form. Next, the shape has to be the same. Then, the corresponding sides have to grow or shrink proportionally, so the scale factor has to be the same. The scale factor is a number in which the side lengths grow or shrink proportionally. Also, the perimeter has to be the scale factor times the original image's perimeter. Let's ignore the mathematical accuracy of this paragraph for a moment, and let's take a look at the transition language. First, next, then, and also, join each sentence into a whole. The paragraph flows. The writer has shown the reader the relationship among all the different sentences. This is strong writing, and this strong writing is simple to accomplish. Just use transition language. This is also good definition writing. We talked in the beginning about how a definition paragraph must demonstrate all the different components of a single definition. These transition words have shown that the writer knows the definition contains numerous components, and each transition word separates those components, showing each one individually to the teacher. Let's review the concepts for this video. First, you must answer a prompt by finding the correct subject and providing an answer. Do not forget each task. Restating can be done by finding the correct subject, and answering can be done by understanding your concept. Use strong subjects throughout your sentences. In mathematical writing, that could be a mathematical concept. Also use clues, like the word you in a prompt, to understand that you should use you as a subject. Use transition language. Transition language is fairly intuitive. You should understand which transition words and phrases to use, but if you don't know which transition words and phrases to use, use some simple ones. First, second, third, next, last, then, also. Even a simple word like but or and can provide transition among ideas. If you can follow all three steps, you can take a mathematical reflection and make it clear writing. As long as your mathematical concepts are accurate, then your math teacher will be happy, because not only will you understand the math, but you will have clearly explained the concept.